सामने चेक करें प्लीज फेसबुक पे चेक करें आ गया ना फेसबुक पे ठीक है रजिस्ट्रेशन थी आज जी वेलकम डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर हबीबुर रहमान मोस्ट वेलकम डॉक्टर रियाजन क्या हाल है अभी मैंने रिकॉर्डिंग लगाई नहीं क्योंकि मैंने कहता हूँ फिर वो लगा दू याद करना जरा भी दस मिनट पांच मिनट के बाद लगाए अस्सलाम वालेकुम डॉक्टर साहब क्या हाल है डॉक्टर रियाज अख्तर आप ठीक हैं हाँ अनम्यूट कर लें फिर आवाज आएगी आपकी वैसे नहीं आएगी आप एंटर नहीं हुई शादी का ये अभी तक ऑफिशियल फॉर्मली हमने ये वेबिनार शुरू नहीं किया अनऑफिशियली मैं अनाउंसमेंट कर रहा हूँ कि जो लोग आ गए हैं थोड़ा सा हमें पेशेंट होना पड़ेगा क्योंकि आज 25 की रजिस्ट्रेशन है और इस वक्त 10 के करीब पार्टिसिपेंट्स आ गए हैं पांच छह और आ जाए तो फिर इनशाला हम शुरू करते हैं जी दो बज के चार मिनट है वी आर फोर मिनट बिहाइंड द स्कड्यूल नाउ तो इन मेरे ख्याल में भगवाने वाले लोग ज्यादा ज्यादा आ जाएंगे तो हम इंशाला शुरू करेंगे जी जी जो लोग सीपीडी के लिए जिन्होंने रजिस्ट्रेशन कराई हुई है 
काइंडली आप लोगों ने हर वक्त अपना वेब कैम ऑन रखना है ये पाकिस्तान इंजीनियरिंग काउंसिल की रिक्वायरमेंट है जी और इस पे बल्कि और सख्ती की गई है कि इस पे अमल दरामद हमने करना है जी तो काइंडली मैं वैसे रूल्स तो अब एक दफा बताऊंगा जब फॉर्मली शुरू होगा लेकिन क्या आप लोगों ने कैमरा नहीं अपना बंद करना इस पर मैं किसी किस्म का रीजन नहीं सुन सकता क्योंकि ये एक रिक्वायरमेंट है जी रूल है और ये जिसने सीपीडी सर्टिफिकेट लेना है उसने अपना चेहरा लाइव कैमरे के सामने रखना है ये रिक्वायरमेंट है जी मुझे बार बार अनाउंसमेंट ना करनी पड़े स्पीकर साहब तंग होते हैं और उनका स्लो टूट जाता है बात करने का जब मुझे ऐसी अनाउंसमेंट बीच में करनी पड़ती है शुक्रिया आप लोगों का सिर्फ खातन को हमने एक एक्सेप्शन दी हुई है वो लाइव उन्होंने भी आना है लेकिन अगर अपना वो चेहरा कवर करना चाहती हैं तो जरूर करें लेकिन अपियर लाइव होना है जो सीपीडी के मतम नहीं है जी जी इन शाह दो बज के दस मिनट पे हम शुरू करेंगे दो बज के सात मिनट हो गए हैं जिन लोगों ने अपने वेब कैम ऑन नहीं किए हुए मेरी आवाज अगर उन तक जा रही है तो काइंडली अपने वेब कैम ऑन ऑन कर लें और जब स्पीकर साहब लेक्चर दे रहे होते हैं आप लोगों ने अपने माइक्रोफोन्स म्यूट पोजीशन में रखने हैं ताकि कोई बैकग्राउंड साउंड ना आए और डिस्टरबेंस क्रिएट ना हो क्रिएट ना हो जी ये ब्रॉडकास्ट जी सिर्फ पाकिस्तान के लिए नहीं है जूम पे ये लाइव हो रही है फेसबुक पे भी वहां पे इंटरनेशनल व्यूअर्स होते हैं और ये बार बार अनाउंसमेंट करने से इंप्रेशन भी खराब जाता है हमारा तो काइंडली तो गुजारिश यही है कि आप लोग जो है एक तो वेब कैम अपने ऑन रखने हैं माइक्रोफोन पोजिशन म्यूट पे रखना है स्पीकर साहब के अलावा रिजवान मिर्जा वेलकम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग जी दो बज के दस मिनट हो गए हैं पार्टिसिपेंट्स भी हमारे पास अब काफी आगे हैं मेजॉरिटी आ गई है तो मैं जी अब शुरू करता हूं और जी जी एक मिनट
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. And a very happy new year to all the participants and, and to those who are watching us on Facebook. Today, Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers is presenting its technical lecture number 38. The topic is effect of dam breach parameters on modeling of downstream parameters. Our speaker today is Dr. Habibur Rahman Mughal. Before I introduce the speaker to you, it is my responsibility to spell out the rules of this webinar. The first one is all registered participants for CPD points have to appear live on webcam. The exception is for ladies only. While appearing on webcam, if they wish, they can cover their face. During the lecture, microphone of all the participants except that of the speaker shall remain in mute position. Three, there will be a question answer session of 20 minutes at the end of the lecture. However, the speaker has permitted questions during the course of lecture that is slide by slide. But kindly make a note. During the lecture, questions can be asked by typing the text in the chat box only. However, during the 20 minute normal question answer session, you can ask your questions through the microphone in your own voice. As you know, this uh, broadcast is being uh, telecast live on Facebook channel on our Facebook page where we have participants who also like to ask the questions. Same rules apply for them. You can also ask questions by typing the text. Uh, yeah, uh, with the exception that during the question answer session, they do not have the facility of asking the question through their microphone. So they will have to ask the questions in any case by typing the text in the chat box. Thank you. So these were the rules and I hope all of you will follow these rules strictly and you will not force me to make the announcements during the lecture uh, when it is being delivered by the speaker because it causes disturbance and flow of the lecture is affected. Thank you. Now it is the introduction of the lecture and uh, uh, speaker and uh, today's speaker as I have told you is Dr. Habibur Rahman Mughal. First, his education. He did his BSc in civil engineering in 1991 from University of Engineering and Technology, Lahore. From the same university, he did his master's in 1996. Then he proceeded to Japan and he did his PhD in hydrology and water resources engineering, including sediment transport modeling in 2001. That is University of Tokyo, Japan. Currently, he is the professor in civil engineering department of University of Engineering and Technology. And besides that, he has worked as a director, Computer Center CED UET Lahore from 2004 to 2009. He has worked as a division, a head of division of hydraulics and engineering, hydraulics and irrigation engineering from 2009 to 2017. He has also worked as OBE focal person of the department since July 2014 to date. He has worked as an editor Pakistan Journal of Engineering and Applied Sciences from 2010 to 2017. He has worked as a director CEWRE from 2nd January 2017 to 10th January 2019. He has been the chairman of civil engineering department three times from 2007, June 2017 to December 2017, then from January 2019 to June 2019, and then from 3rd July 2019 to 31st July 2019. Apart from his professorship, his teaching his, he's working as a teacher, he also provides consultancy services. Professor Saab has 
to date provided consultancy services in the areas of his interest on about 51 projects. Now, it's very difficult for me to tell you uh, the name of the projects. It will consume a lot of time and I have a limited time here. So I have already apologized to Doxa that I, his, uh, it, it took me really about two hours to sum, uh, summarize his, uh, uh, his career uh, for this uh, webinar, for his introduction in this web webinar. Doxa has won some grants and awards also, which are, uh, he has won about 14 grants from national and international organizations to carry out research works internationally as well as on domestic projects. The, the, the notable organizations from where he has won the grants are uh, Asian Development Bank and UNESCO. His honors and awards are, he got second position in the final year BSc Civil Engineering Examination. He has a Medal of Excellence first position in Sindh Board of Technical Education. He was, he has best, a best presentation award in second summer symposium, Tokyo, Japan, 2000. He has the highest score in teachers evaluation report in CED. And he has excellent presentation award in fourth Asia Pacific Association of Hydrology and Water Resources, APHW conference, Beijing, China in November, 2008. Training workshop seminars. Professor Saab has conducted and managed 42 workshops and seminars in addition to 30, which he has attended in Pakistan and abroad. His areas of interest are flood management, sediment management, flood forecasting, water technologies, hydrology and water resources, climate change, groundwater recharge and hydropower projects. Affiliations. He is affiliated to Pakistan Engineering Council, Pakistan Society of G GIS, Pakistan Engineering Co Congress, Asian Center for Engineering, Computations and Softwares. He is a member of Advisory Board of Asia Pacific Association of Hydrology and Water Resources. He is the member University Network for Climate and Adaptation Change Research. And then he is the member the Asian Council of Science Editors. Publication. He has to his credit 83 publications, which he has an author or co-author. And in addition to this, his public to, to these publications, he is an author to two laboratory manuals. Now, this was a very summarized short uh, introduction of Dr. Saab. And uh, please, uh, if you want to know more about uh, Dr. Saab, you can contact him directly or uh, if I have left out anything important, he can also uh, uh, share with us before starting his lecture. So Dr. Saab, this, uh, uh, I am finished with your, uh, with your introduction. Kindly start your lecture. <coughs> Thank you very much, sir. But in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful, Honorable Chief Executive, Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers, Engineer Tahir Sultan Sahib, Dr. Riyaz Akhtar Sahib, Engineer Rizwan Mirza Sahib, Member, Board of Directors, Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers, and other members of Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers, distinguished guests, fellow engineers, scientists, ladies and gentlemen, and participants of the today's technical lecture on effect of dam breach parameters on modeling of downstream flooding. Assalamu alaikum and a very warm good afternoon to everyone. It is a matter of immense pleasure and great honor for me to deliver a lecture on the effect of dam breach parameters on modeling downstream flooding on behalf of Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers and on my behalf, I warmly welcome to all participants attending this online technical lecture. I am highly thankful to engineer Rizwan Mirza uh, who invited me for this lecture. And I am also highly thankful to Mrs. Sadia Naveed, Administrator, Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers for her support in arranging this lecture. 
So I would like uh, that the, from the participants that they should ask me questions as per their convenience, uh, maybe during my presentation and of course, after finishing the presentation. Uh, what I would like to have an interaction session, interactive session uh, with the uh, participants. Only one side talking and just listening, I think is not good for learning. And for learning, it is necessary that both sides uh, should be attentive. Uh, so sometime I will ask myself the questions uh, from some of the participants, just to know that they, they, are, they are not sleeping. And uh, today's presentation uh, would be highly useful for the consultants, those who are working with the consultants, those who are clients like WAPDA, our small dam organization, and for the policymakers. You know, in general, dam break modeling pre presentations are discouraged in Pakistan. Uh, they say, oh, we, we don't have many dams. And uh, people, they oppose dams. So why you are present dam break modeling? You are creating a panic. So it is not like that. Actually, dam break modeling we do for our safety and for the safety of general public. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to now start my presentation. I hope that uh, the slides are easily visible to you. Uh, most of the part of my today's presentation is basically a research work carried out by my one MSc student, uh, Mr. Munir Ahmed. And uh, he's from Wabda and he did uh, this uh, research work. So much of the slides are now edited by myself. And uh, these would be the contents of my presentation. And my introduction has already been uh, carried out. Just I want to mention that uh, uh, I am not only a professor, but also providing advisory services in the field. And more than 50, I have worked more than 51 projects, including international projects uh, like the San Susi Dam of Mauritius and uh, flood inundation modeling using GPS for Vietnam. So that was only the additional things which I want to mention. Uh, now, how many are the reservoirs on this earth? Roughly 515,000 reservoirs are on this earth. And these reservoirs, uh, they have a surface area um, of one, acre, one hectare or 2.5 acres are larger in size. And there are 24 reservoirs having 1,000 square kilometer surface area. And there are three reservoirs in the world which has more than 10,000 square kilometer surface area. So in general, we can say that around 500,000 are the reservoirs over this earth. Now the question is why dam break modeling? So it has been estimated that around 3,700 dams worldwide have failed uh, since 12th century. And out of them, one third, they are failed due to inadequate spillway capacity of their dams. And there are about 200 notable dams, uh, which has caused 800 fatalities. Now the main categories of the dam failure, they are by breaching. And normally the embankment dams are the earthen dams, they fail by breaching. And the earthen dams, they may fail by piping or seepage failure. The third is maybe the foundation failure. The next is overturning. 
And the fifth reason could be excessive dynamic forces, either induced by the earthquake or due to severe bump blast. So this is the map of the United States. And you can see the locations of the uh, dam failures. So here in these colors, these colors, they show that uh, the period in which these dams were failed in the United States, like this black color is pre-1900. And this blue is from 1901 to 1950 and so on. And these are red are the latest ones from the 1991 onward. And even you can see that these red dots are available uh, at several places over the United States. Its diameter, it shows the number of fatalities uh, which has occurred due to this dam breakages. And these big diameters, they show more than 250 uh, casualties uh, they occur due to these dam failures, even in the United States. Now I would like to show you dam break animation. Uh, so I would like to share that. And uh, just to give you an idea that what happens. Uh, now I am running this animation. Can you see this animation? Someone should respond me. Are you hearing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you see, this is the dam breach here. This is the dam. It is an embankment dam. And here the breach has been taken place. And you see this now the water of the downstream side is spreading over the flood uh, on the, you know, flood plain. Sorry, because, because video is not in the, uh, video. Sorry? So we can't see the video. I can't see it. Okay, video is, you cannot see the video? Okay, I will try again. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But actually I have shared it. Yes, sir, your, uh, your screen is being shared, but after that, uh, no animation. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, I will try to share again, otherwise. Now, sir, share, share screen pe ja ke jo hai, wo particular window jo aap open karenge na, ye animation or dam jo aap open karte hain. Either pehle share screen pe click karenge, uske baad us window ke upar ja ke click karenge, to phir wo hogi share. Yeah, the same I am doing. Okay. Anyway. Okay, uh, let us leave it because uh, normally I don't use this, uh, uh, you know, Zoom, I use MS Teams. So may, it, it, it was a just one minute video and uh, in which uh, the dam breach was shown and on the downstream of the site, there was a flooding. Excuse me, sir. Okay. 
वो जो आपने अभी वीडियो जो अभी शेयर नहीं हो सकी उसके अंदर जो स्क्रीन शेयर कर रहे हैं आप वो जस्ट वीडियो पहले प्ले करके पॉज कर लें और जब आप स्क्रीन शेयर करने लगे तो आप उसकी वीडियो शेयर करें ना कि वो फोल्डर शेयर करें उसमें ये प्रॉब्लम आ रही Hmm. Now, okay. No, I think. Okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> Doctor, may there might be a technical hitch, so I think. Oh, yeah. uh, you can continue with your lecture you just explain what you wanted to show in the video and exactly, we can continue. Exactly. okay 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 better that uh, we go back there and uh... <clears throat> All right. Now I have shared presentation, same present presentation with you. Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. You, doctor, you can continue. You, you, you. All, all right. All right. Now the question is why dam break modeling? Dam break modeling is required to determine the impact on downstream due to assumed dam failure. Moreover, you know, whenever we want to compute the flood magnitudes uh, for hydraulic structures, maybe any dam or anything else, and if there are potentially gloves, glacier lake outburst floods, those are possible, then what we have to do, in addition to computing, uh, you know, the floods from the classical methods like the flood frequency analysis or by the hydrometeorological method or by the empirical methods. We also have to compute uh, the flood due to glacier lake outburst. And then what we can do, we have to do the dam break modeling. And from that location, we uh, break that dam. And whatever the flood hydrographs we get without that towards the downstream side up to the up to the proposed dam side and then we can compute uh, the flood also from the gloss so dam break modeling is required for that purpose similarly dam break modeling is required for the landslide outburst flood assessments if there are some potential sites of the landslide of the landslides then uh, by assuming that this landslide will happen and then it will breach and then how much it flood it will produce on the, uh, the dam which we are now designing. Similarly, the most important is number D, basically to prepare the emergency action plans. So what are those emergency action plans? These are basically are required for the safety of the occupants as there should be minimum loss to the lives. So for these purposes, we require dam break modeling. 
So what is the significance of dam breach parameters? You know, once we have to do the dam break modeling, uh, note that dam break modeling is a hypothetical study in which we have to assume dam breach parameters. And uh, what are those dam breach parameters? How much should be the width of the breach in the dam? How much should be the depth of the breach? How much should be the side slope of the breach? And how much would be the uh, time to breach? So these four are the main dam breach parameters. And then what we do in this hypothetical study, we assume those dam breach parameters. You know, the wrongly chosen, these breach parameters, which give you wrong results. And that is called as garbage in and garbage out. So uh, we should be very careful while designing the breach parameters. For example, if I have uh, selected breach parameter in that way, uh, that their width, we, I have taken two less than the actual, which means the flood peak, which will generate, would, would be much lesser than the actual. And similarly, the inundation area would be much lesser than it would be really. So these, on the other hand, if I have assumed a bigger value of the uh, breach width uh, as compared to actual, so what will happen? The flood peak value would be more, inundation area would be more, and just I will be creating a panic for the people. So it, 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 it resulted due to my wrong uh, selection of the breach parameter. So the breach width, depth, side slope, and the breaching time are, as I mentioned, you are the breach parameters. And the breach parameters, they depends on the material and type of the dam. You know, for earth, earthen dams, the breach parameters would be different. For concrete dams, the breach parameters would be different. And for, you know, the concrete arch dams, the breach parameters would be different. So the same value of the breach parameters we cannot use for all types of the dams. So wrongly selected dam breach parameters, of course, will give you erroneous results, which may create sometimes unnecessary panic conditions. So how we can know the true value of the breach parameters? Now, this is my question from you people. Uh, Mubashir, can you tell me how I can know about the true value of the breach parameters? What is the most appropriate way to know them? Mabashari, are you hearing? <clears throat> okay, Fatma Hani Frame. Can you tell uh, me? Maybe, yes. Statistical yes. analysis of previous observed data of flood. I guess, yeah. maybe. Yes, you're right. So the most reliable thing that we must study the breach parameters of the failed dams. How much were their words? How much were their side slopes? How much were the depth of the breaches? And how much was the breaching time? So if those data someone has observed, are we can estimate you know, by some ways, then that is the, uh, you know, the most reliable thing. And that can tell us the correct value of the breach parameters, the same, you know, the other researchers they have done, and uh, also the over major civil engineering societies they have done, um, uh, like US Army Corp of Engineers, National, uh, weather service uh, and you know the other organization like FERIC they have done 
and uh, then they have published the values of those breach parameters. So here, uh, this is a typical breach. This is the dam, and this is embankment dam. And here there is a reservoir. And you know, this breach has occurred due to some reason, maybe by overtopping. And uh, due to overtopping, uh, so this is the average width of the breach. So bottom width is this one, which is smaller, and this is the top width. And uh, this HW is the depth of the water in the breach, the yeah, depth of flow in the breach. And HB is the total height of the breach. Where this HD is the depth of the dam. <laughs> Doctor, we have a question. Yes, sir. There are two questions. One is from Shafiqur Rahman, who is on Facebook. All right. He, he has asked, do we have any guidelines from standards ASCE or I code uses for these parameters? Maybe the question was related to some of your previous slide. All right. So uh, shall I first respond for this question? Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, actually uh, from ASC, at least uh, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen any reference. Uh, similarly, neither from my code, but the, I mentioned the, uh, the authorities, uh, the forums from where, uh, which we will also discuss, US Army Corp of Engineers, they have given that and National Weather Service, they have mentioned uh, these values of the breach parameters and the FERIC, Federal uh, Regulatory, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. So these authorities, they have already, uh, you know, they mentioned uh, these breach parameters. As far as uh, he's asking, at least I don't know about them. Yes, sir. Now for the Facebook uh, participants, uh, I just want to inform them that there is a 45 seconds time lag between uh, the transmission, which is being telecast on Zoom and uh, Facebook. So there might be a little delay in answering your question. So bear with us this uh, okay. time. Second question is, sir, from RMCE. I don't know what is the real name of this person, but it is RMCE. I think one needs to work with upper and lower bounds and make a sensitivity analysis. So what yes. is the... <clears throat> I think it's a very good uh, his question. Rather, it, it's a comment. And, uh, you know, uh, this Manir Ali, uh, who's this MSC research work, has done the same thing. Actually, what he has done, he has collected, uh, you know, the, uh, the data latest, which he could, uh, you know, collect. So he collected about uh, 86 dams data, which I will show you. And uh, using that data, then he has developed the lower and upper bounds. And he has even modified the already uh, developed equations from various researchers. So that we will see uh, at the end. Okay. Sir, okay. Yeah, excuse me, my question is. Yes. Sir, you lower and upper bounds develop karne se kya mera tha? Mujhe is cheez ki samajh nahi lagi. Lower and upper bound, you know, you know the just old. Thing, just, just, sir. Mr. Zafar, sir, please, we have to follow the rules. The questions through microphone can only be asked during the last 20 minute session. So you have to post your question in the chat chat box. Kindly observe the rules. So Dr. Sam, you please answer this question. No issues. All right. <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, that is a range uh, of a parameter. For example, when we talk about uh, the side slope uh, of the breach, so the side slope may vary from vertical. So vertical means Z value is zero or the Z value is one. So one means the 45 degree angle. So zero to, so these are the uh, basically bounds. Similarly for depth of the breach. 
So some, they have defined the depth of the breach maybe from 0.5 uh, HD to one HD or so on. And similarly for time to breach. So some they have given smaller time, some they have given uh, a bigger time. So those are the bounds, upper and lower bounds. That's very good questions. Shall I move yeah, ahead? Yeah, please move ahead, doctor. No further. Right. Okay, the uh, uh, same which uh, we have already discussed that uh, the wide and brick modeling uh, and uh, what are the breach parameters? As I mentioned you, these are the four breach parameters which are the very important. That is the average width of the breach. Normally in case of uh, earthen dams, the breach width is smaller at bottom and it is bigger because the shape is normally trapezoidal. And if the breach width at bottom is zero, it means the shape of the uh, breach is triangular. And uh, then the next is the depth of the breach. And the next parameter is the side slope of the breach as we have discussed. Usually the concrete uh, beams, uh, they, they fill uh, with Z values equal to zero usually and uh, breaching time. So the earthen dams breaching time is more, but the concrete dams breaching time is very less. So it means the concrete dams, they fail very quickly. So dam, uh, these parameters, they depends on the dam types, as we have mentioned earlier. So is it is over dam, which uh, we want to do for uh, the dam break modeling? Uh, is that dam is the embankment dam? Uh, is a concrete gravity dam, uh, it is an uh, arch dam, or uh, it's a CFRD dam, so on. So these are the uh, breach, uh, um, uh, a breach has been shown here. So this is the bottom breach width. And uh, here, uh, this is the B average, because this is the top width, and Z, B, and Z value for the breach, one in ZB, and ZB is the horizontal, uh, one in horizontal. And uh, so this is the case for piping. Whereas, uh, sorry, this is the case for the, uh, uh, you know, the overflowing case. If there is an overflow, and then uh, if the uh, a breach has happened, it is like that. The second uh, dam failure, earthen dam failure, could be due to piping, uh, the seepage uh, flow. And when the seepage forces, they increase, uh, then the internal cohesion of inter and internal friction of the uh, particles of the material of the dam, then what happens, uh, the seepage is keep on increasing and, and, and the opening uh, in the, uh, you know, the dam, that also keep on increasing. And this uh, piping hole, it becomes bigger and bigger and it fails the dam. Now I would like uh, to show you from another presentation uh, by sharing. So this is a Teton Dam in Idaho State and it failed in 1976. And uh, you can see that here piping occurred and it has made uh, this much opening in the dam. And it further, there was erosion from the bottom and it is further, it is eroding. And now the, this breach has also gone further up and further it is going up. And now it has covered almost entire depth and it is becoming widening from bottom. And now it has covered the crest of the dam as well. Now the crest of the dam has disappeared. And now this has, again, this has become a now a complete breach. So this is how uh, you know, the earthen dams, they fail in 
pipe bay. And you know, this is the picture once the <laughs> dam uh, was disappeared from these both sides. And now I'm unsharing uh, this uh, slide and going back to our Okay. Thank. Oh, thanks, God. So now we have to discuss the hazard classification, the dam failure hazards. So these are four, like high hazard dams, significant hazard dams, low hazard dam, and no public hazard dam. What is a high hazard dam? So if a dam fails or breaks, and of course, due to that dam failure, there is loss of lives in addition to the loss of the you know, dam and other structures, then that is called as high hazard dam. And uh, what is a significant hazard dam? Significant hazard dam is that if a dam breaks, then of course there is damage to the other structures and infrastructure and the buildings and the other things and itself to the dam. Uh, but uh, there is no loss to the human life, then that is called a significant hazard dam. The next is low hazard dam, low hazard dam is that um, if that dam fails, then no human life loss is expected. Dr. Sam, do you have a question? Yes. It yes, is, sir. It is Mr. Shafiqur Rahman who is asking, do we have cases of abutment failure in case of concrete arch dam? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, this is true, she, and uh, you know the dam which I uh, showed. I will show you uh, in the subsequent slides. So there is one case in which uh, you know the uh, the the concrete dam failed due to abutment failure. That I will show you. I will show them. <clears throat> All right. So low has a dam. So there is uh, which loss of human life is not expected and significant damage to structures and public facilities as defined for the significant hazard dam is also not expected to result from the failure of the dam. Then that is called as a low hazard dam. Now, what is the no public hazard dam, a dam in which there is no loss of human life is expected? if it fails and for which damage only to the dam's owner property, only that is the loss and there is no another loss. So it means we have to carry out dam break analysis for all high hazard dams and for significant hazard dams. So, <clears throat> so dam break modeling is required. So dam failure in addition maps, maps are required for all dams classified as high and significant hazards. 
Inundation maps are also required for dam classified as low hazard unless the dam is located in a remote area where no development exists downstream of the dam. So if the no settlements are available, no towns are available downstream of the dam, and it is a very far area, uh, then uh, uh, the inundation maps may not be required. But if those are available, then the low, then even then we have to carry out the dam rate modeling. So hence it is necessary for the consultants to do the dam break studies at feasibility stage of the dam projects. So it means uh, for high hazard dams and significant hazard dams, we need dam break modeling. We have a question. Yes, welcome. This is Ms. Huzaifa Mukhtar, she's asking, is this hazard classification according to some international guidelines? If so, what are they? Oh, yeah. Of course, it is as per international guidelines, but uh, at this time, I don't remember uh, because uh, I was so busy and uh, could not, uh, uh, you know, tell you at this time those uh, reference. Okay, now risk reduction techniques. Of course, this risk uh, of the failure of a dam, uh, we should try to reduce it. So what we can do, we can do, we have two options. Number one is reduce the probability of, of the failure of the dam. Dr. Saab, and, I have to make yeah. one clear. Please, I have to make one clear. Sorry, I addressed uh, Huzaifa Mukhtar as Mrs. Mr. actually. Sorry, it's my mistake. Right. Thank you. Uh, all right, all right. Okay. So the, we should try to reduce probability of the failure of the dam. On the other side, we should also work to reduce the consequences of the failure. You know, what are the consequences of the failure of, of the losses? Losses to the lives, losses to the uh, to the building, to the infrastructure, to the crops, to uh, to other things. So, how we can reduce probability of the failure? So, we have to take structural changes to the dam based on most likely failure modes. Which means we have to strengthen the structure of the dam. But generally, this is very expensive and time-consuming, but necessary. So more, more important is the focused monitoring and surveillance of these camps. Like as we, the WABDA is carrying out the periodic inspections of the dams. And uh, uh, in periodic inspection of the dams, you know, there are panel of experts, uh, not only from Pakistan, but from all over the world, they come there and then they investigate from uh, various uh, point of views, from various sites, from hydrological point of view, from hydraulics, from mechanical parts, from electrical parts, and also so, so on. And, and, and they in-depth investigate uh, the, uh, you know, the, the strength and uh, the overall stability of the dam. The second is, we can reduce consequences of the failure and that how we can do we can update and exercise emergency action plans epa to prepare to get people out of homes bay i mean those should not be harmed so we can we can save them from uh, you know fatalities and casualties so this is less costly uh, but it should be done timely. And this is absolutely necessary since we can never get the probability of failure to zero. So we should always try to reduce consequences uh, of failure. Now the uh, emergency action plan, how we can prepare it. So these are the few steps are given. Number one, 
we have to first of all carry out the dam breach modeling and we have to assume certain dam breach parameters then we have to find the outflow hydrograph from this dam breach and then we have to route this flood hydrograph to the downstream locations and we have also to see where the settlements are available and uh, accordingly, we have to compare the flooding uh, inundation levels with the settlement levels, ETC. And then we have to prepare inundation maps with flood wave arrival times, and that we can estimate that if uh, this is the shape of the breach and this flood of hydrograph is being produced due to this breach, then how much time will be taken to reach at several locations on downstream of the dam. So that is necessarily, we must compute it and record it. And then third is, we should identify an emergency situations and actions. So for particular settlements, which are at downstream of the dam, what are those, how important they are, each settlement have its own importance, each town, each installation, are there some maybe atomic installations, some other installations, uh, and so on. And the fourth is, we have to identify and meet with involved agencies like PDMA and city districts, CTC, because, um, because we want to make this EPA Emergency, sorry, EAP, emergency action plans. So with coordination to those all organizations, we have to take in confidence. And uh, number five, we must identify communication methods, primary and backups. Nowadays, uh, the communication is very fast. It's not as maybe 25 years back, and now we have very strong mobile networks. We can do messaging. We can, uh, you know, if we have the context uh, of uh, particular, you know, persons of the communities, then we can inform them uh, well ahead of time if something happens at the dam location. And what's it? Yes. So there are two questions. I'm going to read the both questions together. Please answer them quickly. The first one is from Ubashir Ali. He's asking, do you think that before selecting the hazard, we have to identify the risks? This is Mubashir Ali. And the, second yeah, yeah. Question, and the second question has come from Yasser Salim on Facebook. He's asking, you have mentioned about the hazard maps used during the study to figure out the hazard category of dam. Can you please name some examples of maps, please? All right. So the first question from Mubashir Ali, and uh, what he's asking that uh, first we should define hazard, or first we should carry out a dam break modeling. I think it's a very, very, uh, uh, you know, intellectual question. And uh, of course, we cannot tell it. Uh, without modeling. So first we have to do modeling and then we have we, we can know that uh, how much areas on downstream of it it is going to inundate and what are those installations and uh, the you know the hazard produced would be such that it may cause casualties. So if that can be assessed of course by initial dam break modeling. Uh, of course, so uh, once we have to do the initial modeling and then we can know. This is what he has asked. And the next is uh, from uh, Yasser, Yasser Abbas. And uh, I forget what he asked. <laughs> Yasser, Yasser Salim on Facebook, he has asked, you have mentioned yeah. hazard maps used during study to figure out hazard category of dam. Can you please uh, name some examples of the maps, please? Oh, actually, uh, those hazard maps, of course, uh, uh, should be produced by some organization like PDMA or NDMA and uh, uh, the other organizations, maybe Survey of Pakistan, 
So like these, they actually these are their duties that they should produce. And the dam organizations. All right, Jay. So now we are here at seven, prepare draft EAP, emergency action plans. Once it is prepared, then it must be uh, distributed, which is drafted EAP to involve agencies for review and comments. And after getting those comments, uh, we very wise over emergency action plan and distribute copies. And then uh, we have to carry out the regular, regularly, regularly it must be reviewed and revised. It is not like that, it is just prepared once and that's enough because let's say for uh, the, there is a climate change and uh, with the passage of time, uh, the, you know, the dam strength is also losing and so on. So we have to keep on uh, revising these emergency action plans. Now the breach uh, uh, mechanisms, how the uh, breach forms. Uh, one is the breach forms suddenly, and second are the graduals, and the third is a mix. In the sudden case, uh, the breach is formed by sudden removal of a portion of the dam, like maybe the whole bay of the concrete dam, or all of the embankment structure as a result of overstressing forces on the structure, like concrete dams. The example is Francis Dam, Lake Kiluno Dam, and Austin Dam. So concrete dam normally their breach formation mechanism is sudden. Whereas in case of earthfield dams and the rock dams, the breach formation mechanism is gradual. And uh, so those, their breach progresses in size with the erosion, which takes place with the flow of water. And, uh, you know, the seepage, can also produce a breach as we, we have seen that in case of Teton Dam. <laughs> and sometime uh, there may be a mixture of the both that there is an overflow and also seepage failure and uh, piping and uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the overflowing both, they, they may cause the uh, breach. So these are the three possible uh, dam breach mechanisms. Now the analysis of research on the dam break modeling, it started uh, from 1980s uh, when the computer programs were developed to analyze the dam breaching process. McDonald and uh, Langridge uh, in 1984, they have made programs uh, with limited accuracy to model the dam breach um, modeling and uh, uh, failure timings uh, they have computed. Then later on, McDonald, uh, they collected, you know, the, uh, the data of the 42 dams which were failed. And by collecting the, those data, they established and they developed the empirical relationships uh, relating like the reservoir dimensions to the uh, breach worth and the timing and the peak discharge. Uh, similar statistical regression analysis were performed by USPR in 1988, Von Thun in 1990, and Dewey in 1993, and Four Hillich in 1995 and they, they, they have developed their own empirical models. So then after developing those empirical models, uh, you know, the one example of this is the equation developed for the National Weather Service, NWS, 
which was called simplified dam break model in 1984 by Wetmore and Fried. So that is the beginning how the dam break modeling started. So the uh, next is the few guidelines about the dam break modeling and uh, Ferric, 1993, the guideline for the earth embankment, breach width typically falls between one to five times the dam height. And the second failure time typically varies from 0 0.1 to one hour. And the breach side slopes, they vary from one horizontal to four vertical to one horizontal to one vertical. And now these are the worldwide dam statistics. So the total dams, as we discussed, about uh, uh, 5,015 uh, dams. And the large dams, 515,000 dams. And the large dams, as per I told, uh, are more than 57,000 dams. And uh, Large dams, as defined by I cold, uh, is a dam whose height is maybe greater than 15 meter, or if its height is in between 5 to 15 meter, but it's uh, you know the reservoir capacity is more than 1 million cubic meter, even then that dam is a large dam. So those large dams are around 57, more than 57,000. So the dam failed in Pakistan are also five, <laughs> but those dams are not very big dams. Those are the small dams, and uh, those were in Balochistan province of Pakistan. Uh, some of the dams, they were made by the uh, locals, uh, just local farmers uh, of the Balochistan province. So dams failed in UK are more than 66. And dam failed in USA are uh, more than 160. And dam failed in China, more than 3,486. Uh, it means about 3,700 dams are failed till now. So this is uh, the picture of Mal Pasit Dam. It is thin arch dam. And uh, it, is on, it was on the river Ray Ran and uh, in the France. And it was failed in 1959. And its reservoir capacity was just 51 million cubic meter. And how much is the reservoir capacity of Tarvela Dam? Tarvela Reservoir? 14,000 million cubic meter. So it is only 51 million cubic meter, huh? <laughs> so uh, this dam, uh, it, it caused uh, about 421 fatalities or casualties due to the failure of this dam. And Professor Carl Terzaghi, he commented on uh, this dam and he said that the left abutment of this dam appears to have failing by sliding along the continuous seam of weak material covering a large area. So actually this abutment of the dam was weak as per Carl Terzaghi. And this arch dam basically failed uh, due to this uh, loose uh, abutment. Someone asked me that is there any dam concrete arch dam, which was failed by the failure of the abutment or movement of the abutment. So this is the answer. Now it is another dam, St. Francis Dam, and it is again a concrete arch gravity dam. So this one, and uh, this, this was in USA and it failed in 1928. So its reservoir capacity was again 47 million cubic meters. And uh, the dam had failed very suddenly. 
and uh, you know it cost about 40, 470 lives uh, casualties and uh, here you can see the picture of the dam uh, before failure and this is the reservoir and here you can only see the uh, you know the bank here but this is part of the dam is here but rest of the dam is washed away this is uh, another dam uh, which is the lower ote dam failure it was rock filled with the concrete core wall it was also in usa and it failed in 1916 and uh, you know, in 1900, after, you know, after 1970 and 60, uh, till that, in many dams were failed in USA, and then they became much serious about the, their inspection and about their care of the dams. And uh, they started, they have taken so many safety measures of these dams. And uh, as a result of that, the dam failures, they reduced. And here you can see that uh, this is the picture of this Ote Dam. And uh, here you can see the spillway and this side of the dam uh, failed here and, uh, in 1960. This is the uh, Bankyo Dam, and it was an earth dam. You can see that this is the earthen dam, and it was in China on the Ru River, and it failed in 1975 due to the typhoon uh, Nina. Nina is a typhoon name, and the height of the dam was 24 meter, and its reservoir capacity was about 492 million cubic meters. Again, this dam is much smaller than Tarbela and design of 1000 year, uh, this was designed on 1000 year return Peter flood. And this is the, this was the dam, uh, which caused severe most dam failure in the history because it cost about uh, roughly uh, 26,000 fatalities. So based on the previous uh, data, uh, which we, we have seen from the literature, uh, so the dam failure around the world picture is given in this pie chart. So piping and seepage caused 38% failures, overtopping 35%, structure and foundation failure 21%, and other 12%. Dr. we have a question. Yes, sir. This is from Muhammad Ahmed Qureshi. He is on Facebook. He is asking yes. how to prevent a dam from seepage. Kindly guide. Yes. <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, I am not that much dam expert, but we can, if we can provide proper drainage to the dam you know, the carry away the seepage and the impervious layer which we have provided in the dam as uh, the water should not flow through the body of the dam. And the second thing is the proper drainage. If it drainage blocks, then it damages to the dam. And then, you know, the undermining takes place, CTC. Okay, now the dam breach parameters from several references which are given in this table. Uh, and these are the breach parameters uh, guidelines for earth or rock fill dams. These are for concrete gravity dams, and these are for concrete arch dams. So for earthen or rock fill dam, so as per USACE, uh, US Army Corps of Engineers, in 1980, they say that uh, the average breach width is 0 0.5 to three times the height of dam. Whereas horizontal component of side slope 
h is from 0 to 1. It means maybe from 45 degree to 90 degree. And the failure time is from 0 0.5 hours to 4 hours. Whereas uh, uh, the same uh, US Army Corps of Engineers is in 2007, they have slightly changed the values that they have given a wider range uh, for the average breach width from 0 0.5 to 5 of the height of dam. So the side slope, uh, they kept the same. And the failure time, uh, they have even further reduced from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. 0 0.1 hour means six minutes. So from six minutes to four hours. And then the ferric uh, in 1988, uh, they have given uh, uh, the average width for the rockfield dams from one to five times the height of the dam. Whereas the side slopes, according to them, is the same. And but they have given uh, a lesser breaching time, and that is 0 0.1 to 1 hour. And by NWS, National Weather Service, and FREED 2006. So they have uh, uh, given a larger value of average breach width. Instead of uh, one, they have given two to five. So ST. So this value of the breach width is more conservative because it will give us a higher value of the flood peak uh, due to the breach. <coughs> and uh, the horizontal component is same. And the failure time is almost same as the other. Now the concrete gravity dams, uh, so their width, breach width uh, is usually less than or equal to 0 0.5 L, where L is the length of the dam crest. And uh, the side slope of the breach is, that is vertical. So it means the H value is zero. And uh, the failure time is very short maybe 0.1 to 5 hours. And it is as per US Army Corps of Engineers and the ferric uh, further reduces the breaching time to 0.1 to 0.3 hours. So, and uh, the breach worth is less than or equal to 0.5 L. And as per NWS, National Weather Service, so the, it is even less than 0 0.5 L, the breach width, and the concrete dams, they fail exactly vertically. Uh, their breach is, uh, side slope is exactly vertical. And as per NWS, the breaching time is further lesser. So it is only 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 hours. So 0 0.1 hour means only six minutes and 0.2 R means only 12 minutes. So as for an NWS, a concrete dam fails in six to 12 minutes. It's a very short time. <coughs> and uh, concrete arch dam, so how much is the breach width of the concrete arch dam? Usually it is 0 0.8 L to L. So it means the whole length so it means the uh, as per USACE and uh, uh, how much is the horizontal slope? Of course, it depends on the valley wall slope, whatever are the valley wall slopes up to that, there is a dam and uh, the breaching time for the concrete arch dam is even less than 0.1 R. So it means, so concrete charge dams, they fail less than six minutes. Whereas <clears throat> United States Army Corps of Engineers, they have revised in 2007. And uh, they said that the, the breach words you can take from 0 0.8 L to L. And the horizontal, component of the breach side slope means the value of H is from zero to valley walls. And again, the breaching time is less than 0 0.1. Ferrick says that in case of gravity, 
uh, sorry, in case of concrete arch dams, the entire dam becomes the bridge width. And uh, of course, uh, their slopes, the bridge slope, side slope, it is either zero or it depends on the slope of the abutments, uh, slope of the banks and the time of breach, you know, all they are uh, uh, confident about the time of breach that it is less than 0 0.1 hour. And so it means if you will see this table, then as far as the breaching time or the failure time of the dam is concerned, that is low west for concrete arch dams. So they are highly brittle and they only take less than six minutes to get failed. <coughs> now, <coughs> these are uh, some dam breach models, uh, which are proposed by, uh, for the other dams by several researchers. These are the models for the breach width, and these are the model for the Z factor. Z factor means uh, the side slope. So horizontal part one in horizontal for the side slope. So Johnson and Illies in 1976, they say that the breach width varies from 0 0.5 height of dam to three times height of dam. Singh and Seng says that the breach width varies from two twice of height of dam to five times height of dam. So whatever they got the data accordingly. And Frohlik, uh, he has given the equations for the average breach width, uh, 0 0.47 K and S, and the B average is also like this. So B top, B bottom divided by twice of height of the breach and the ferric in 1987. So they are giving that breach uh, width varies from height of dam to five times the height of dam. Reclamation in 1988, they says that the breach width is around three times height of the water in the breach. And the wonton, he, they have given this equation for the average breach width, 2.5 height of water plus CB. And the Frohlek uh, has given this equation, which is a function of the volume of water in the reservoir and the height of the bridge. And then come to the Z factor. McDonald's give the Z factor range from 0 0.5 to 1. Frohlek gives uh, equation for the Z factor like this. And the Ferric says that the Z uh, for the other dams where it's from 0.25 to 1. And one ton, this, it gives uh, Z is equal to 1 for cohesive shells, a very wide cohesive course. And the Frohlich gives Z value for 1.4. Dr. Okay. we have two comments. <clears throat> yes, sir. We have two comments from uh, Rizwan Mirza. Earlier, I could not recognize him. He was using RMCE, so it is Rizwan Mirza Consulting Engineers. The first comment is, in case of earthen dams, the control seepage may be undertaken through the design of adequate filters. And his second comment is, in an arch dam, if one section is damaged, the thrust line responsible for ensuring equilibrium is eliminated. Now, these are the two comments made by Rizwan Mirza. If you find expedient, you can comment on it or you can continue with the lecture. No, no, no. Actually, these comments are uh, absolutely true uh, because in case of the arch dams, the stability depends on the thrust given by the, uh, you know, the abutments or the banks of the river. And if uh, those becomes loose, so it endangers the stability of the arch dams. Uh, so there is Azan. So shall I wait for one minute? Hmm. Yes. 
So in the meantime, we have a question also from uh, Yasser Sadeem on Facebook. He's yes, asking, sir. he's asking what were the main cause of the failures, upstream flooding or earthquake? Okay, sorry, I was listening uh, this Azan. And uh, uh, yes, in, in case of the concrete uh, dams, I think in major cases, those were earthquakes. And uh, uh, in some cases, the loosening of the, uh, you know, the bank material. And uh, in some cases, there may be the overturning but uh, you know, nowadays, even we can design those dams uh, con considering uh, the dynamics of the earthquakes, dynamic loading of the earthquakes. So, so there should be no issue, but the failed dams uh, are of course from earthquakes as well and by other reasons as well. <laughs> Now, for embankment dams, breaching time, if you will see, we have many equations given by Singh, McDonald, and uh, these equations uh, are available. And uh, what I am seeing that the time left is also too short. So I don't want to go in much uh, detail. Uh, but these equations say that the, uh, uh, you know, the breaching time is from 0.25 to one hour, whereas, uh, according to McDonald, he has computed breaching time on the basis of the volume of the dam material eroded. And uh, uh, this Froholik also computed the breaching time on the basis of S and Ferric. They have given that range from 0 0.1 to one hour. And the reclamation has given this equation and according to them, the breaching time is 0 0.01 times the B. And uh, similarly, these are the equations given by the other researchers. Now come to the concrete dams. What are the several equations are the values for the breach parameters given by the various researchers? Uh, for uh, as, as we have already seen that our US Army Corps of Engineers, uh, they say that the average width of the breach is the multiple monolithics, uh, maybe the base, one bay, two bay, three bay are like that. Uh, they may fail uh, due to the uh, concrete uh, failure due to any reason. And uh, failure time is from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 hours. Whereas uh, as per Ferric, uh, the average width is less than 0.5 well, and the side slope is vertical in all cases. And uh, as NWS says that the breaching time is 0.1 to two hours. For concrete R stamps, these are the same as we discussed earlier. And uh, uh, in case of concrete arch dams, uh, the the uh, the side slope would be the valley wall slopes are zero, and uh, as per USAC of 1980 and USAC 2007, and also by Ferric and NWS, but they say that uh, the failure time is in all cases is less than 0 0.1 hours, means less than six minutes. Now, uh, this is the uh, data plotted uh, and on one in one line uh, for uh, a breach width value up to 300. These are the three 
uh, graphs and the lower one are for, uh, you know, the bridge width up to 1000 feet, oh, sorry, 1000 meters, I am sorry. And uh, you can see that uh, all graphs show some correlation, that there are some correlations between the observed breach width and the predicted breach width as uh, given by von Thun. And this is, these graphs are by Frohlich and this is by reclamation. If you see uh, these bottom graphs up to the width of 1000 meters, 1000 meter means one kilometer <laughs> is the breach width. So which author has given better breach predicting equation? This is my question from you. Maybe anybody can answer. Of course, the value of R scale is not given here, but visually you can see. <clears throat> okay, if, if these dotted are one in one lines, dotted line is 45 degree line, then this Frohlich uh, data matches very well uh, with the uh, observed breach widths. Uh, now come to the uh, problem statement of uh, the work which has done by Mr. Munir Ali. So, so the dam breach parameters are required to investigate the impact on downstream flooding. Various researchers have given various models to predict the dam breach parameters. So selection of correct dam breach parameters are essential to assess the downstream flooding appropriately. So that's why there is a need to revisit the available dam breach parameter models for modeling flood inundation due to dam breach. So these were the, their objectives, collection and characterization of worldwide dam failures data collection of breach parameters data for local dam failures. I mean, the dams which have been failed in Pakistan and to explore the existing best breach parameter model and to check the effect of dam breach parameters on downstream flooding due to assumed failure of proposed Naran dam. So this was the methodology adopted, like uh, the data was collected the data of the failed dams of 86 well, dams worldwide, those were failed, that data was collected, their salient features were picked. And then uh, the observed breach parameters were noted. And for the proposed Naran dam, the data was collected, geometric data with the cross sections, flow data and downstream settlement data. And then the data was analyzed they were grouped, uh, data were grouped separate for concrete dams, for embankment dams, for arch dams. And uh, then exploring the best existing model for the dam break. So one in one uh, line graphs were plotted to know that which model predicts very well, and which matches with the observed views. And then the sensitivity analysis were carried out for the breach width and the breach time. Just by increasing the breach width and decreasing the breach width, what is the effect of the inundation area and the peak value of the flood immediately downstream of the dam? And similarly, uh, on the breaching time. If the breaching time is changed, if the breaching time is reduced or increased. And then dam break modeling was carried out. It's uh, SACRA's model was set up for the river Kanar. <clears throat> then the geometric data was provided. Then the dam breach parameters were selected and the downstream flooding uh, was uh, estimated and the downstream uh, flooding was analyzed.
The data collected uh, for this study, the geometric data was collected from Mirza Associated, uh, Mirza Associates Engineering Services. The flow data uh, was uh, collected from the surface water hydrology project Wabda of the Na Naran and uh, downstream settlement data that where are settlements, how much is the area of the settlement, how, how much are, where are the limits of those settlements, uh, those uh, we have collected from the Google Earth and the uh, field dams data uh, from the research papers, books, and reports that were collected. Now, the, these are the four uh, local uh, dams which failed, Shadipur, Gawar, Gago, and Chawli Dam. And these are in these districts, Pasni, Turbat, Lasvela, Ketch, uh, on these, uh, in 2005, February 2005. Uh, due to the westerlies, and there was a Yemeni, uh, you know, the cyclone which resulted in severe rainstorm, and uh, due to uh, the overflowing and the breach occurred, and those dams failed. So these are the uh, breach parameters for uh, Shadikor Dam. This is the picture of this Shadikor Dam before failure, and this is the after failure. And uh, these are the parameters. And uh, now come to the Naran Dam. And the location of the Naran Dam is here on the river Kanahar. And uh, these are the salient features uh, of the Naran Dam. And here, this is the river Kanahar and the various settlements. And this, this was the proposed location of the Naran Dam. And on the image of the downstream, uh, there is one, one settlement that caused such right. And then there was such left. And there was Damdama. And there was Naran city, Naran town. And then there was, this is the Chapra. And here, Darseri. And then Chambar. Uh, so the dam break model, which we uh, use for the HECRAS and the reason of using this HECRAS, the HECRAS can model uh, the front hydrograph due to the dam breach, but that dam breach you have to give yourself. Uh, it cannot model itself uh, dam breach due to the erosion, but we have to give finally the size of the breach. And secondly, uh, the the HECROS can easily uh, model the flood routing. So if a flood hydrograph is known at one location, so we can easily um, model it on any downstream location. So these are the uh, salient features of the Naran Reservoir. So the grass reservoir capacity is just 14 million cubic meter. So you can know that the Tarbela Reservoir, gross the Tarbela Reservoir original capacity was 14,000 million cubic meters. So it means this Naran Reservoir is 1,000 times smaller. And uh, the other data, and then uh, these are the salient features of the Naran Dam. And the type of the dam was concrete arch gravity dam. And now these were the cross sections, uh, which we have uh, input in the high cross model. And here the inline structure was given for the dam. And then the dam breach parameters were provided here. And <clears throat> before doing, yes. Comments and questions. So yes, sir. The first one is from uh, Mr. Zahir Malik, he's on uh, Facebook. It's a question and a comment. I mean, he's asked a question and he's answered also partly himself. So if you want to comment, you can comment. Mm -hmm. he's, he's writing, which dam type would be more resistant to breaching and how this aspect can play a valuable role in an appropriate dam type selection. Mm -hmm. The range of possible values for breach characteristics suggests that an embankment dam gives comparatively more failure time. Probably the concrete dam would breach only once. 
it has already reached failure resulting in the faster failure times being associated can exactly. you please comment so this was the first yes. one answer it then i'll go to the second one please yes exactly so what he is saying that uh, the uh, earthen dams uh, their breaching time is more it is true uh, because uh, the water has to scour the flow of water has to scour gradually from top to bottom or by piping and then it takes more time to have a, a full breach uh, so concrete dams of course they 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 fail suddenly yes sir next it is again from facebook it is mr shafiq rahman and uh, he has i don't know whether he is asking or is commenting it's regarding modeling of dam failure and submergence of downstream area normally which approach which approach uh, us is it physical modeling or numerical modeling by using sophisticated applications utilizing cfd fsi and ssi that is abacus ansys midas autodesk cfd etc okay. all right also, all right also tell us computational effort and cost of such complex analysis so please answer it after this i have another comment Kind, kindly go ahead uh, all right so actually what he is asking that uh, uh, physical modeling uh, are we doing the numerical modeling or the physical modeling for dam breach actually the you know for earthen for just for the breach creation we can do physical modeling but for flood inundation modeling physical modeling is not possible because of uh, we have to cover a large length of the river on downstream side maybe several kilometers maybe 50 kilometers sometime 20 30 kilometers I, i don't think that the physical modeling would be feasible as far as uh, the second his question was uh, using uh, 3d numerical model cfd model abacus and etc yes that we can only use for modeling the breaching section Uh, because that is a limited volume it has a limited volume and that we can model it but if you will say that the abacus are those uh, 3d models cfd models if i want to uh, use uh, you know the modeling the, uh, the dam breach flood inundation that's not possible because uh, it has a very large length of the river which we have to cover and of course uh, that models cannot run if we will run them maybe it will take maybe 6 months running time simulation time so that, that that is not advisable so maybe 1d models they are enough our maximum we can use 2d models now in hecras uh, 2d option is available and that we can use sir the next question yeah it is from uh, rizwan mirza and he is uh... saying in any case i feel the coefficient of determination r sq what is this r square maybe could, could r, be r square yes sir r, r square r could be between uh, 70% to 80% that is the common rule yes. yes yes the r square should be as maximum as possible when we compare the predicted value and the observed value if it is close to one it is the best and as it is going towards zero it means there is a poor correlation okay so uh, now uh, uh, all participants uh, i will just note down the question any further questions that would be asked uh, uh, in the question answer session let now dr right. sahab uh, conclude his uh, lecture uh, as we are running out of time thank you exactly sir so uh, you know whenever we have to do the uh, flood inundation modeling and when once we have prepared our model and we have provided geometric data to the hecras so uh, first of all we must calibrate it and then we should validate it without calibration and validation uh, we cannot rely on the results of the model so this calibration was done on the 2000 2007 flood and then the model was done uh, so, uh, sorry the validation was done on the 1993 flood and we got uh, you know very close values so it means uh, the model is well prepared and it can 
be used for its application. Uh, then, uh, you know, what should be the upstream boundary condition which should be given for modeling uh, the flood inundation due to dam breach? That's a very big question. Shall we give the PMF hydrograph? Now we have to think which type of the dam break we are modeling. Is that dam is an earthen dam? Is that dam is a concrete dam? Is that dam is a arch concrete dam? And what could be the possible mode of the failure that, we sh that should be in our mind? And for example, that as this dam is concrete arch dam, so the expected failure may be the earthquake. So we should not put PMF as the upstream boundary condition. So we should, we may use 100 year return period flood or so on. So the same value was used and uh, the breach width was uh, used this much, uh, which is uh, 0.9 times of the, uh, you know, the standard value. And uh, sorry, the breaching time was used 0.1 hour. And uh, what we did, we have carried out uh, three set of, uh, uh, you know, the simulations to do the sensitivity analysis, one on the standard values and the uh, average breach width was 360 meter. Then we reduced it to 20% uh, uh, to 90 meter and then reduced to 10% in 318 meter. And similarly, uh, the breaching time was 0.1 hour and then 0.08 hour and 0.06 hours just to see the what is the response of the model. So breach depth, we took the entire depth of the dam and uh, uh, the valley slope, you know, the same as uh, the the slopes of the uh, banks of the river, and those are those were those are rigid, you know, that for that area. So this is the inline structure. Uh, for the Naran dam break modeling. And here the dam breach uh, data has been given and the failure mode uh, adopted is over time, over topping and the, uh, the time has already been is, uh, is given here. Here it is given failure time in hours, 0 0.08 hours and like that. So these are the several settlements downstream of the Naran dam and uh, these are the minimum and maximum elevations of each settlement are towns. And this is the total area of those settlements, which we have determined from the Google Earth. So now the results of the study are that, uh, uh, these are our findings, that the piping and the seepage failure is more. Um, maximum uh, dams, they are filled through piping and seepage failure, about 49% of the earthen dam, 32% by overtopping, and structure and foundation failure, only 7%, other 12%. And this is the comparison between the, you know, the previous research and our research. So then the next is, these are the bands of which are given uh, by uh, what we have done, we have plotted, uh, for example, the, 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 the parameters which are given in the equation. So this is the dam height and the breach width because the breach width here given by the Johnson is a function of the uh, height of the dam. And then we plotted these lines to see that the how and where the observed data uh, that lies and what are the ranges uh, given by this researcher? Similarly, uh, this is for the breach width. And uh, you know some of the data is also lying outside it. And here is also outline, uh, outside it. And uh, in this case, uh, again, the breach width by ferric. So most of the dams, uh, they are within the reach. But some are also outside the range. And this is by equation given by the reclamation and the sum data is also not, uh, uh, I mean, away from the line. So this is one thing, of course, most of the dams are following it, but, um, but still uh, even certain dams breach width is lower than the, its lower limit and higher than its upper limit. So this is for Z factor. Uh, this is given by McDonald from this to that but we, we, we have found data even above it. And this is 
from the FedEx. So these are the lines of the FedEx from 0.25 to one, but we have found uh, several dams uh, which, which are crossing these limits. So this is again for Z factor, but from other researchers, this is from other researchers, they have given one value, but you know, the data has more scattered. And uh, for breaching time, Singh has given this range, but you know, even there are much higher times are available, even 8.5, even 12 hours are also recorded. And uh, here you can see that by ferry, so only this is the breaching time is given from 0.25 to one hour, but we have found up to 12 hour. So data is available. Now, what should be the range? Now, these are for breaching time, the equations. And once we plotted the equation, it gives this plot, whereas the available data is like that. And this is by McDonald, and this is the available data. So how it is modeling it. And this is the one ton, one ton, uh, you know, the equation, and this is the plot of the equation, and this is the data, and so on. And this one is the for uh, breach width uh, for arch dams, concrete arch dams, and it is covering well. Uh, but you know, the uh, not much data is available for the concrete arch dams. And. Uh, this is for breach width uh, for the for earthen. And now, now what we did, we have uh, modified those equations. Uh, and for for breach width, what we have found that uh, if we separate the dams as per I cold definition, large dams and small dams, then they can be categorized in a better way, and we can give equations separately. So we have given a separate equation to compute the breach width. And now we have given a larger range, 0.25 to 7.5 age. But for small dams, it is from the height of dam to six times height of dam. So everything covers in it. Now for uh, breaching time, and uh, we have given uh, this equation proposed. And uh, similarly here, we have proposed this equation instead of his equation. And uh, this is for concrete dams. So we have proposed this equation based on the available data and these ranges based on the available data. So, so, so now uh, this is a summary of the uh, equations and the, the equations which we have modified for breach width and for urban dams. So Johnson, and uh, the B, uh, they, they have given this uh, range 0.5 to three times HD. And what we are saying that if it is a large dam, then these are the values. And if uh, it is a small dam, then these are the value. And, uh, you know, for Z factor, uh, we are giving a value of 0.25 to three uh, for the earthen dams and uh, for uh, breaching time, uh, instead of this, we are giving this. And for Wonton, uh, uh, we have modified it and a range has been, uh, and the equations have been given like this, 0.0Y to 0.15HW to 0.35HW. So for concrete dams, uh, we could only give uh, the, for the breach width and uh, the proposed equation is 1.16 times the height of dam to 5.95 times the height of dam. And uh, uh, the and the breach depth is from 0.48 to 0.99 the height of dam. But we could not develop equations for breaching uh, time and for the Z factor because of non-availability of the data. Now, this is the, uh, the plan view of the Naran uh, uh, River. And uh, now once the dam has broken, then and a 100 year return period flood was uh, being routed, then this is the inundation map and it is inundating this much area. So this is in the cross section, longitudinal section of the, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, the river. So this is the dam, and this was the uh, reservoir level. And once it failed, so water has gone here, and these are the depths of water in the river. So uh, these are the locations, as I mentioned you earlier, and uh, these are the uh, uh, you know the stages at at uh, several locations, which are the settlements. So we can know that how much was the uh, level of water or inundation level, and these are the flood hydrographs. This is just downstream of the dam. And then at several downstream locations, the peak is attenuated. And uh, you know, from here, uh, one can estimate that in how much time it will reach here uh, to any location. For example, from this to this location, uh, this much time would be required. And these are the maximum depths and the velocity of flows as a result of dam breach. And uh, then this is the result of the sensitivity analysis uh, between breach time and inundation area. As we increase the breaching time, so inundation area that decrease uh, with the increase in breaching time, so that inundation area decreases. So a smaller value produces a, a more inundation area. Uh, but the, by you know, increasing the breach width, of course, the inundation area increases. And uh, by decreasing the breach width, the peak discharge increases. And uh, by increasing the bridge width, of course, the peak discharge also increases. And now these are the final conclusions. If the field dams breach parameters data is categorized on the basis of size, either large or small dams, as per I code, then it improves the model results. As per collected data of locally filled dams in Balochistan, the spillway capacity was insufficient. Worldwide filled arch concrete dams were almost completely washed out. And uh, inundation area have increasing trend with decrease in time of failure and increase in breach width. Peak discharge have increasing trend with decrease in time of failure and increase in breach width. Expected mode of failure for Naran Dam is extraordinary earthquake and not the overtopping. And downstream settlements, Soch right, Soch left, Naran, Chapra, Dasri, Jambar are safe against 100 year return period flood. So it means after this modeling, we could know that uh the hazard of of the, it is not that much hazardous there so now what are the recommendations uh, based on the experience of pakistani field dams this will be must be provided with sufficient discharging adequate discharging capacity and these are the modified equations for the uh, breach width for large dam and for small dams so this is the modified equation for uh, earthen dams. So dam failure for earthen dam is D, this one, and the breach width for concrete dam is proposed this. And uh, for dam break modeling like Naran dam, inflow hydrograph should be based on low return period as upstream boundary condition. And the result can be used for better selection of dam breach parameter for dam break modeling. And with that, uh, the presentation, I, I conclude my presentation. And now if you have further questions, you are welcome. Thank you very much, Doc Saab. An excellent lecture. I must thank you with the depth of my, from the depth of my heart. It was such a nice, technically high class lecture. And uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure after, uh, uh, listening to this lecture, our engineers, design engineers especially, must have learned a lot on the design of the 
dams. So say uh, how to design a safe dam. So thank you very much. Now I invite questions. We start a 20 minute question answer sessions and I invite questions from you, from all the participants. And uh, as I have already uh, uh, said, you can ask your questions by typing in the chat box or by asking through your microphone. So first question we have got from Rizwan Mirza again, and he mm. is saying, is asking why the, is, why the return period needs to be reduced? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, you know, once uh, how we have to model uh, this dam rate, it means first of all, we have to model the whole of the reservoir. So in the reservoir, this, uh, and we have to put a dam somewhere. And you know, in the reservoir, we have to give first the upstream boundary condition to the model. Now upstream boundary condition, we can give maybe very less discharge or very high flood. If we give a very, very high flood, let's say PMF, uh, the chances of which theoretically speaking should not be there, then what would be the results of the dam breach modeling? We will get a very high value of the peak discharge and also a very large inundation area and the large depths of the uh, inundation depths. So such type of results uh, are not justifiable and because we are not doing dam break modeling. We are just creating an extreme possible uh, scenario. We are modeling an extreme possible scenario. So extreme possible scenario uh, uh, can, can, can never happen all the times. And uh, that very heavy scenario we should not consider. So we should take maybe 100 year return freedom floods for and if the, uh, if the possible failure type is not the overtopping, and that we know that in concrete dams, that may be an earthquake or in arch dams. So that's why we should not increase a lot of uh, the flood uh, value uh, to be used as a pristine bombing condition. So results would be unrealistic. You, any more questions? Those who want to ask questions uh, through their microphone should ra raise their hand. <clears throat> Can I ask a question? Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Professor. That was very an informative and knowledgeable lecture. So I have two questions and both of them are interlinked. My first question is that we are providing an empirical model for practical application. So whenever we are recommending an empirical model, there exists uh, a larger chances of uncertainty as well as the data size of the data, which is under consideration, usually differs. So the correlation test which we usually apply on a data does not always give appropriate results that we can recommend with certain uh, credibilities or confidence or uh, confidence. So what you recommend mm -hmm. that if we are recommending results for practical application, what should be the size of data for empirical analysis? Okay. Actually, the you know the in the language of statistical uh, uh, field, uh, so the size of the data for developing any equation or model, it, it depends that how much accuracy, uh, how much uh, you allow the error in computing the average value. So if you allow five percent then of course you require more data. If you allow 10% error, you require less data. So it depends on you that what is your accuracy level. As your accuracy level increases, uh, then R over error value reduces. 
So we require more data uh, to have that, uh, you know, the correlation. Your, uh, the first part, uh, as far as the empirical models are concerned, uh, the question is at some place, uh, the thing is at certain places, empirical models works well. So it, that we learn from experience that where we have to use empirical models and where we have to use process-based models. Process-based models, they have their own pros and cons. Of course, they are more sophisticated. They require more uh, knowledge. They require in-depth knowledge. They require more, you know, the uh, mathematical equations like partial differential equations. Their solution, uh, is, analytical solution is not possible. So we have to do uh, their, uh, you know, the uh, numerical solutions, ETC. So uh, there are plus and uh, points for them as well. But on the same time, they require more time for simulation. Whereas an empirical model can give us a quick result. So sometime, maybe an empirical model is better, but in some cases, it may not be better. So that we have to decide that where we have to use empirical model and where we have to use, uh, uh, you know, the process-based models. Secondly, to check the uncertainty, again, there are several statistical parameters. One is R square, coefficient of determination. The second are the confidence limits. So I would prefer that we may use the confidence limits as a better measure uh, to check the correlation between the observed values and predicted values. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Saab. We have now a question from Mr. Yasser Salim. Yes. Who, who is watching this webinar on Facebook. He, he has asked how you consider the geological failure conditions in the dam breach data and how it affects the simplified dam breach equations you have shown. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a, a very good question. And uh, if you will uh, see uh, the geological factors, of course, are not directly added or included or considered in those equations. If you will uh, see those parameters, they are simply related with the height of dam or length of the dam and no, no geometrical parameter is used. So geometrical parameters as an experienced engineer, we can use just to know the mode of failure or reason of failure of the dam, that how possibly this dam will fail. For example, if we have a concrete dam, we know that concrete dam uh, cannot fail by overtopping. But if it is an earth, earthful dam, yes, if it is overtopped, we may uh, say that it can fail. So like that, we have to uh, consider. So in those equations, uh, geological factors are not directly uh, involved. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Saab. Now we have another question from Shafiqur Rahman. He's also on Facebook. He's asking historically failed dams. Uh, I could not read this question properly. Historical failed dams, who was mostly put responsible consultant or contractor? I think basically, <laughs> basically is asking for the fa failure of the dams, who is responsible, consultant or the contractor? I mean, so difficult to <laughs> Very difficult to answer. <laughs> very, very difficult to answer. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, you know, in the beginning, the dams which were uh, designed by the consultants, of course, we learned from experiences. And uh, we made in the beginning some, some, some mistakes also. So uh, what I think 
maybe uh, the consultants in the beginning they were more responsible uh, but now the consultants they have enough knowledge and, uh, and, and they are designing in a better way so this is my 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 uh, you know reply to the question okay now uh, doc sahab uh, we have a question from again uh, ritwan mirza he is asking this is in continuation of my preceding question regarding return period i submit that the choice of time period would also depend upon the hazard associated with the failure higher the hazard higher shall be the adopted return period it would be a high hazard and a low probability event which needs to be considered all right <clears throat> so actually the hazard uh we are interested to compute due to dam failure not due to a very extreme hydrological event now the question is if our objective is just to find the uh, uh you know the uh, the inundation depths and areas as a result of dam breach then uh, we should not give uh very high values to the upstream boundary condition i am of the opinion again and uh, so we we should keep a lower return period if you if i will keep you know the pmf as an upstream boundary condition then of course the of the same dam will change into a high hazard dam of course and that i think is unnecessarily to do uh, for dam break modeling okay thank you and now we move to facebook it is mr zahir malik he has written dam break itself is a remote possibility considering stringent design criteria standardized and documented accordingly uh it should consider the chances of least probability like pmf in addition to smaller return periods for developing a better range of considerations for the eap this aspect is more likely for detailed design stage than a feasibility level study sir please comment on this aspect also ah uh, yes uh actually the question relates uh, with further modifications huh of which uh, we discussed in the uh, you know that uh, um uh, what was that epa e e a p yeah uh, and uh, as far as the pmf is concerned for even for a dam uh, i know the several example i can quote for several dams we have computed pmf previously its value was lower but now considering climate change the pmf value are revised so the same case is applicable to the dam break modeling and with passage of time uh with climate change or with other changes uh, which may enhance the risk or hazard so those should be updated with time thank you doc sir now we have another question from yasser salim in uh, on facebook he is uh, he has written from the dam breach analysis is it possible to predict the time available for evacuation for downstream population in case of a high hazard dam uh, yes actually that we have seen uh, the results which i showed you the flood hydrographs at the several locations if i can go back yeah this is so you know this peak is resulted at this time suppose uh, just on downstream of the dam and uh, for example if uh, i want to know at any other location this black this black is at soch right so at soch right the flood peak will reach at this time 
so we have also tables huh? and from tables i can read Okay, this value is let's say 183 and this value is uh, 192. So it is nine minutes roughly. Eh? So it means uh, in nine minutes from the downstream of the dam, uh, the flood peak will reach over there. And uh, for how much time it will remain, that we also know. So that can be analyzed from the hydrograph. So such type of computations are possible. Okay, now we have uh, we have something from Rizwan Mirza, which uh, actually I am switching over between Facebook and I have three computers in front of me and I am uh, oh. monitoring everything. <laughs> so I can't keep the track of questions and their continuity. Rizwan, I think what, what are you asking? Why don't you come on the microphone and, and uh, if you have a comment, please uh, say it. And if you have a question, please ask it. Thank you. I just uh, have a comment. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, there was a question regarding the uh, legal liability. Uh, um, because of my interest in law, I think I must respond to it also. Uh, it is not necessary that someone must be held liable under law in case of every failure. There may be failures for which no one would be held liable uh, mm -hmm. because professional liability has to be established not on the strict sense of liability which is applied to shopkeepers and manufacturers. You have to be uh, held liable for negligence. If the consultant is not negligent, if the contractor is not negligent, none of them is liable. This is my uh, opinion. Sure, sir. I agree 100% with you. And, uh, you know, the uh, investigations usually are carried out. Uh, but in the developed worlds, the responsibility is fixed uh, accordingly and correctly. But uh, uh, <laughs> I cannot say about our country. But, uh, you know, the uh, in foreign countries, they accept their mistakes. And then they say that, yeah, it has happened due to us. And in Japan, I know that if uh, some loss has occurred to the uh, to the uh, community, uh, then uh, those Japanese, they are unable to face the nation, <laughs> they do suicides. And uh, they say that, oh, I made this mistake. So we should at, at least, being Muslims, I, am, I don't say that we should do suicide, but we must accept over, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the mistakes and, and we, we have also to face the consequences, whatever the law says, whatever the court says. The Bureau of Reclamation has had colossal failures on their record. They were yes. never officially liable or uh, the, the uh, authority of approving the large dams being taken away from them. They are still yes. at the helm of the affairs. Nobody has punished them as such. They mm. did their best and that is all they could do. Mm. As you said, they were learning. Now there are fewer failures. This is correct. Yes, yes. As compared to, you know, in uh, if you will see before 60s, there were more failures. Oh, yes. <clears throat> but now reduced much. So uh, if we still have five minutes. If anybody has any question, he can ask. And I have one more. Yes, Ms. Rame, go ahead. Uh, professor, in your presentation, there you show, showed us the graphs of correlation between different parameters. On one graph, the R squared value was 0 0.3 to something. So was it recommendable or not? Like uh, you have mentioned that the value which is closer to one is best and which is closer to zero is not. All right. So Are you talking are you talking about these graphs? Uh, 
Yes. I think, I think, yes, yes. Of course, this relationship uh, is not so good. But anyway, this is the data available with us. <laughs> I mean, we cannot fabricate it. These are the results. And of course, this relationship, I mean, this equation, uh, we should not accept, uh, accept it as a good, good equation. But the others, so we'll they, are, they are very good. So we will no, not yeah. recommend it, right? No, no, we will not recommend it. At least it should be um, more than 70%. As earlier said by engineer Rizwan Mirza Saab, so he's right. So there should be some bigger value of the R square. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, but something. we should, you know, we should not hide the, uh, the facts. Actually, the, and you know, the observed data is very limited uh, for, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, but anyway, this is the result of the model. Huh? Yes. What is next? Add a line, sir. Uh, the uh, the interpretation of the data, uh, given the uh, degree of scatter around the mean, must be yeah. in accordance with the recognition of the low value of uh, R square. Uh, this is not a, a case of an equation with no use at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Useful equation. Uh, we yeah. know that there is a correlation. We know that the correlation is weak, but we also know that the data is limited. If there were more data, we might have had a better uh, idea of the mean line and the degree of scatter around the mean. And then when absolutely you make true. Reason, absolutely, uh, you absolutely know upper true. bound and you know your lower bound. Exactly. That is how nature is. Yeah, yeah. So now I think we have come to the end of this webinar. And uh, I thank you, Dr. Saab, again. I just want to make a little comment. Is, yes. uh, I mean, it's not regarding uh, this, uh, this lecture. In general, I'm saying that if, you, uh, if one feels thirst or he is a thirsty, he drinks water and he quenches his thirst. But today's lecture was such of high class that uh, the thirst has not been quenched. And the thirst is there for more knowledge and more interactive section with you. It was such a high class lecture, Dr. Sir. And uh, it's really uh, amazing that uh, a professor of uh, your class is teaching in UAT and uh, how proud your students must be who have been taught by you. So this was just a, uh, just a remark which uh, I had been feeling throughout the lecture. And uh, I really thank you from the core of my heart and uh, from the, on behalf of Pakistan Society of Civil Engineers uh, that uh, it was a marvelous and amazing lecture. Thank you very much. And so, uh, Thank, uh, thank you, th thank you, Tai Sab, uh, for your uh, compliments and comments. Uh, actually, uh, I, I, I just try from myself to satisfy my students, and uh, nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second thing is that the work which uh, I do from outside the university that gives me more confidence. Uh, only uh, just by reading the box. But when I solve some practical problem, uh, it, it gives me more confidence. So with that, uh, I am highly thankful that you have invited me uh, for this uh, technical lecture. So thank you very much, sir. So thank you, Doc Saab, again. So some announcements before we conclude this session. The next lecture will be on 12th February, 2022. Our speaker is Dr. Iza Anwar, who is an assistant professor in UET Highway and Transportation Engineering Department. The topic is autonomous and electric vehicles, challenges and opportunities.
So it is on 12th February, 2022. And uh, Dr. Saab, your uh, shield and your certificate, inshallah, would be delivered at your office or at your home, whichever address you have given to uh, Ms. Sadia Naveed. She will dispatch it through the courier and all other partic uh, participants, they can collect their CPD certificates from 19th January, that is Wednesday, and from 83M Model Town Extension Lahore. And uh, if somebody uh, needs to call before going to the office for the collection of the certificate, the cell number is 0345-424-3404. I repeat, 0345-424-3404. In case you have any difficulty, you can always okay. contact Sadia Naveed for your okay. certificate. You can collect them from 19th January. So with this All announcement, right. we conclude this session and uh, see you on 12th February. Thank you very much. May Allah bless all of you. Oh, Allah. Thank you. Allah bless.